Hello, good morning and welcome to day two of the Bucks Nationals 2019. You join us here at the English Institute of Sport in Sheffield, about 10 minutes away from the action this morning. This is, as I mentioned, day two of the athletics competition, but this sport going on all over the city. Eight sports across six venues. But on this Saturday morning, you have certainly picked the best one to join us. It's a day of distance today. We kick things off with the 1500 meters. That's followed by the 400 heats. We then have the 800s. There's a mascot race sandwiched halfway down the day. Sure, that'll be entertaining, if not particularly quick. And then we move on to the 3000 meters, followed by the 1500 semis. And we close the day a long way in the distance, about quarter past five, with the heats of the 200 meter relays. Well, before we get underway, it's time to say thank you to our main partners, Cookery, Outgoing, Camp America and Ashaway. Thank you for your support. We couldn't have these remarkable events without your continued support. And take a look at this, celebrating 100 years of buck sport in association with Cookery, the main kit partner, and they've got a fantastic new range available now. About seven minutes away from the action getting underway here on day two of the Bucks Indoor Athletics Championships 2019. Had some brilliant performances yesterday. It was the day of the sprints. That 60 meter strip in the middle of the track took quite the pasting because we had the men's, women's and the ambulant competitions as well as the hurdles too. And some really competitive racing, particularly as we got down to the finals. But gold medals were awarded, gold medals were defending as well. Kiela Borde with a fantastic 7.77 in the 60 metres hurdles final. As I'm just being handed a start list here, what's this for? Oh, the 1500 metres in the women's competition, which is the second of the day. We've got 54 entrants in the men's, so they'll be divvied up into six heats that'll start at 10 o'clock followed by the heats in the women's 1500 then we move on to the 400 if you're joining us watching indoor athletics for the first time very warm welcome it's exciting racing a shortened track 200 meters with banked corners if you're more of an outdoor athletics fan you'll be used to the 400 meter track with the flat corners this adds a bit of a different dimension we saw some really explosive distance racing yesterday in the 800s. We've got the semis of those 800s today. It's a long old contest if you want to become the champion in that discipline because you need to qualify on the Friday, win your semi-final on the Saturday, and then win your final on the Sunday. So unlike the 60-meter competitors, who get it all over and done within a day and can put their feet up for the weekend, well, of course, I'm looking at all these uh, spectators here. They're all youngsters. They're all from organizations and they all look pretty tired. There's a massive discussion this week, wasn't there? We even made it as far as Parliament saying that we should push back school start times. And with tired eyes like that on a Saturday morning, it's no surprise. You're wondering what they're doing on their mobile phones? Well, they're tuning into the live stream, of course. We are broadcasting on internet platforms. So whether you're watching on your tablet, your phone, your mobile device, your desktop PC, a very warm welcome to you. We're delighted that you could join us and we're going to be bringing you uninterrupted race coverage from now until the 4x200 metre women's heats at around about quarter past five this evening. Had a brilliant crowd yesterday, a full house. Colours from up and down the country, from Exeter all the way up to Aberdeen, joining us here in Sheffield, a fantastic sporting city. Not just the English Institute of Sport, but of course, they used to have the Don Valley Stadium here as well. We've got the two football clubs, Wednesday and United. Ponds Forge, legendary swimming venue. A 
And these are our first competitors lining up. Keep an eye out for those red-shirted officials. They did a fantastic job yesterday. Until just before the women's ambulance, sorry, the men's ambulance 60 meter final, when there were some of the officials who were adjusting the sand pit for the jumps and they were making so much noise that they had to delay the start. That did bring some smiles to this capacity crowd here in Sheffield. But day two, very shortly underway. And we get things underway with the 1500 meter men's heat, six heats in total. We've got eight, nine starters in each, so they'll be sharing lanes in the beginning. Makes for a nice jostle. And this is how we line up for the preliminary heat number one. There are a few last minute changes. So the list that I've just been handed is slightly different to that one. Heat number one, they'll line up with Adam Moore from St. Mary's, Sam Hansen from Newcastle, Sam Cullen from Sheffield Hallam, Joe Godwood from Chichester, Ollie Freer from Nottingham Trent, James Millett from Imperial, Joseph Tuffin from Birmingham, Adam Poole from Chester, and Alfred Yabsley from Swansea. So that is a, a last minute change. As we have the racers lining up there. You're allowed to go out, do some warm-ups, practice that start. They're over there on the back straight. My commentary position, very similar to the camera position that you'll be watching from today. So we've got exactly the same view. And you'll get familiar with the jersey colours very soon indeed. But I'll do my best to talk you through all of them. In your shot there, we're in 4.59 from Imperial. That was James Millett. And there are a few that are a bit more recognizable than others as well. We saw Ollie Freer there from Nottingham Trent in that hot pink jersey. We'll see plenty of African violet today. That's Loughborough's colors, but they don't go in this one. And we've got Joseph Taff in there as well in that lovely dark red of Birmingham. That's probably the best of Birmingham's colours. Sometimes they walk around the place just like, dressed like parrots in the red, blue and yellow. Well, that's much smarter, isn't it? And then we've got St. Mary's on the near side. Adam Moore representing St. Mary's in those white and blue stripes akin to the Argentina football strip. Very recognisable indeed. So the top two from each heat will automatically qualify, and then there'll be eight qualification times as well. A little bit of confusion down there because we've got athlete 664 who's on the start line, but he's not on any of our start lists. So that's a bit of fun in the first race of the day. Well, a little bit of confusion on the start line because we've got athletes 664 lining up in the Sheffield Hallam colours. And he's not registered on any of our start sheets. We do have 667, Sam Cullum. And in fact, Sam Cullum wearing 667 isn't down there. So maybe there's been a bit of confusion in the numbers. And that was what the adjustment was being made by the officials. But now they're being lined up on the start line. Heat number one of the men's 1500 meters. Five heats in total. The top two going through and the eight best times will join them in the next round as well. He is 
So we are confirming now that Sam Cullen will be racing in heat number one with the number 664. Panic over, everyone. We can get on with the race. So starting this first heat, we have Adam Moore for St. Mary's in that blue and white striped vest. Sam Hansen from Newcastle. Sam Cullum from Sheffield Hallam. Now he's got the correct number on in that maroon, white and black vest and the black shorts third inside. Joe Godwood from Chichester. Ollie Freer from Nottingham Trent in that pink vest in the middle. Well, enjoying Saturday morning a little bit too much with that yawn there. Looks like he hasn't got out of bed. James Millett from Imperial. It's emblazoned across the chest. Bang in the middle there, 459. Joseph Tuffin from Birmingham in the red vest. Adam Poole from Chichester. The man jogging up and down on the spot there in the white and red with the black shorts. And then Alfred Yabsley from Swansea in the white and green. Final checks before we get away with heat number one, men's 1500 metres, the first event of the day. Bags of racing today, five heats in this one, four heats in the women's. And then we get on to the 400 metres, frantic stuff. And underway we go. Nice sharp start, Ollie Freer. Just moving into third place, we've got Imperial's James Millett, who's going to be the pace setter, but not for long, because Joseph Tuffing goes straight to the front over the first 100 metres. So seven and a half laps in total. And now the pace has settled already. We've got two groups of racers. We've got a five and a four. You could say a five, a one and a three, I suppose. But let's keep our attention at the front of this group. Joseph Tuffin is going to be the pacemaker. We've got Oliver Freer in behind him. A little bit of tap dancing there from Imperial's James Millet as he stays close to that white line on the inside and nearly gets tangled up with a couple of pairs of feet. And Alfred Yabsley now from Swansea goes around the Imperial man to take fourth place just behind Adam Moore. And these five at the front already putting about 50 metres between them and the rest of the group. Hallen, Sam Cullum. Certainly quicker than the back markers, but just struggling to keep pace with that front group with five laps to go. So Tuffin leads, Freer in second place, Adam Moore in third, Alfred Yabsley in fourth, and Imperial's James Millett in fifth. That group keeping a steady pace away from Sam Cullum. It's about 20 metres behind, then the rest of the group just strung out, knocking on half a lap now, four to go. So now Ollie Freer, just dropping back into fourth place. Perhaps looking the most fatigued of that lead group. But no one really putting the hammer down, putting a move on yet. No one jostling for position. Keep in my eye on Alfred Yabsley here. He looks quite comfortable and nearly gave him the commentator's curse then as he had to do a little bit of an evasive maneuver himself as he clipped the heels of Ollie Freer, who's now in fourth place. But Tuffin dictating the pace. Now with three laps to go, they just start to string out and this is where Alfred Yabsley Looks pretty comfortable. He's got what seems to be the longest stride of everybody in this group. Adam Moore just on the shoulder now as Oliver Freer is going to have to work hard, as is James Miller, to keep up with this group with 400 metres to go. Tuffin has led throughout, but I think he'll be coming under scrutiny very shortly from those just behind him. We've got Adam Moore in the blue and white of St. Mary's, Alfred Yabsley of Swansea. And they're just coming around Joe Godwood as well. He's going to be lapped 
there might be a couple more casualties as we'll hear the bell this time round and this is where they'll start to wind up the pace Adam Moore takes the lead from Birmingham's Joseph Tuffin and Alfred Yabsley is going to go around the outside of the Birmingham man as well 150 meters to go the pace starts to come up Oliver Freer from Trent and Imperials James Millet have been cut off and now they start to wind it up around the final bank. Adam Moore is going to lead into the home straight. Alfred Yabsley starts to kick as well. But Adam Moore is going to take it. Stops the clock in just under four minutes. It's Moore from Yabsley from Birmingham's Joseph Tuffin. They're the top three. The top two automatically qualify. So that will be Adam Moore and Joseph Yabsley. Sam Cullum crosses the line and then the back marker still has one lap to go so it's going to be a long old slog for Adam Poole from Chester Joe Godwood from Chichester followed by Sam Hansen from Newcastle they stop the clock I wouldn't imagine it'll be quick enough for them to qualify, remember the top two from each heat, plus the eight next best times. And Adam Poole is the final finisher in heat number one. So Moore and Yabsley through. Everyone else is going to have to put their name in the hat and hope for one of the eight next best times. And that concludes heat number one. Athletes lining up on the start line for heat number two of the men's 1500 metres. Adam Moore and Alfred Yabsley safely through to the next round. Alex Goodall from Durham. Luke Greenfield from University of Central Lancashire. Johnny Hill from Manchester Met. Toby Austin of Leicester. Zach Nolan of Exeter. David Malarkey of Leeds Beckett. Kieran Riley Loughborough. Tiernan Crocken of Liverpool John Moores. And Michael Dobrovsky of University of West of Scotland go in this one. Dobrovsky of the West of Scotland is on the outside. Got that Loughborough jersey. The African violet, violet Kieran Riley. He goes into second, but Alex Goodall quickest out of the block, but leads Beckett's David Malarkey straight round the outside. He wants to join the front runners. We've got Manchester Met represented by Johnny Hill in fourth. That's that blue and orange plenty of those jerseys around very recognizable similarly Zach Nolan in the green of Exeter he joins that top five so there is Goodall in the white and palatinate so many universities race in purple and they've all got their own colors as well so Durham's is palatinate Loughborough's is African violet I'm not sure what Leeds Beck it is, so if somebody could inform me of what their particular shade of purple is called, then it would be very welcome. Tweet me, at DROJ, D-R-O-J, uh, D -R -O -J. I'll find you my own Twitter handle, wouldn't it? Let me know what Leeds Beckett's purple is. Anyway, it's all purple at the front. Durham's Alex Goodall, led from the very beginning. He's got Loughborough's Kieran Riley on his shoulder and leads back. It's David Malarkey in third. Zach Nolan tucked in behind on fourth. And Johnny Hill from Manchester Met needs to get back on the shoulder here because he's in danger of being cut off. The second group 
all running together, but they've been cut off the back. We've got Luke Greenfield from the University of Central Lancashire, Tiernan Kroken, and Mikhail Dobrovsky. Now Johnny Hill just starting to feel the pace with four laps to go. That five or six metres might not look a lot, but it'll take a great deal of effort from the Manchester Met man to bridge that gap. And Alex Goodall looks pretty comfortable out there, actually. David Malarkey in behind Kieran Riley. This is the pace we're going to get for the next two laps. And they've put another four, five, maybe six metres on Johnny Hill, who's in no man's land, really. Nobody to work with. And certainly not worth slowing up, because he's got half a lap on the rest of the field behind him. Still, Alex Goodall at the front. Kieran Riley just starting to pull up alongside the Durham man now. And David Malarkey is going to go round the pacemaker as well. Now, has he got a response, or is this going to be a two-horse race going into the last 400 metres? These two at the front look pretty comfortable. A grimace appearing on the face of Zach Nolan from Exeter, but he's working hard to get around the outside and create some space at the front for himself. And Alex Goodall from Durham is now in danger of getting left behind. It becomes a one-metre gap, possibly a two. As David Malarkey starts to struggle as well. And as I say that, he finds some pace to go around Zach Nolan. Kieran Riley from Loughborough. And David Malarkey from Leeds Beckett will lead into the bell lap. 200 metres to go. Who's got a response? Alex Goodall really starts to put the hammer down to try and catch them. Exeter Zach Nolan is out of this one and around the back straight. We've got David Malarkey going around the Loughborough man. Oh, this is a well-judged race from Leeds Beckett's David Malarkey. He could even lap a couple going into the home straight here if he puts his foot down. Kieran Riley in danger of losing second place too. This is a great kick from Durham's Alex Goodall, and Goodall will take second. Malarkey takes the win. Goodall takes second. He shocked Kieran Riley, who thought he'd done enough to take an automatic qualification place. He needs to hope his time's going to be quick enough. Might be in a little bit of trouble there because the winning time is 4.0380, which is slower than heat number one. But a fantastic response from Alex Goodall. He looked down and out, but he put it in over the last 50 metres and right on the line got around Kieran Riley. I think that'll frustrate Riley as well because he checked over his shoulder. He thought he'd done enough and it was too late to respond when he had plenty in the tank. But those are your top three and your fourth place, in fact. There's Zach Nolan from Exeter. Really naughty moustache on Zach Nolan. Crikey. Alex Goodall and David Malarkey take first and second place in heat number two. They join Alfred Yabsley and Adam Moore in the next round. Heat three of five in the men's 1500 metres on the morning of day two of the Bucks Indoor Championships. Adam Ward goes for University of Central Lancashire, Richard Bartram for Bath, Jasper Johnson of Brunel, James Wright of Leeds, Daniel Wilde of Loughborough, Cameron Cass, Nottingham Trent, Matthew Williams, Cardiff Met, Dominic Brown, Sheffield, and James Habergham of Leeds Beckett. Plenty of familiar jerseys in there again 
First time we've seen Cardiff met today. That's the maroon with the gold trim. Got Richard Bartram from Bath as well. That famous blue and yellow. He is near the front as they come round the first bend. Dominic Brown of Sheffield will be the front marker over the line for the first time. It's not long until Daniel Wilde goes to join him. In a slightly different kit, actually. The Loughborough runner from the previous race. Such is student sport that the kit never arrives on time when you want it. Well, Dominic Brown led through the first lap and he brings them into the home straight for the second time where he'll see six laps to go in heat three of the men's 1500 meters. Bath's Richard Bartram and James Havigan from Leeds Beckett currently in third place. Got Matthew Williams from Cardiff Met, the Archers in fifth, Nottingham Trent, Cameron Cass in sixth place. In that increasingly bright pink jersey, certainly catches attention. You've got to be fast if you're going to be dressing in kit like that. But James Habigan. I do apologize. James Wright in the green of Leeds. He's leading that group that's increasingly becoming cut off from the pacemakers. We've got Richard Bartram in third place. We've got Jasper Johnson of Brunel in a similar kit to the Bath kit, actually. Slightly darker, but the navy blue and yellow is currently in eighth place. And Adam Ward, University of Central Lancashire, about 50, 60 metres back now. I think it's safe to say that he's out of this one. But Dominic Brown just winding the pace up a little bit on that lap. Four to go, so 800 metres. No real change at the front, still that group of five. Cameron Cass from Trent has lost a bit of ground on them. I don't think he's going to make that up. Matthew Williams starting to go through the gears, though, in the colours of Cardiff Met. Richard Bartram of Bath just working hard to keep parity with that lead group, being led with a plomb by Dominic Brown of Sheffield from Matthew Williams. Three laps to go. Now Daniel Wilde dropping into fifth place in the Loughborough jersey as everyone else seems to wind it up and he's not responded. So is that his race run? James Habigam of Leeds Beckett goes alongside Richard Bartram. 400 metres to go. This turning into quite the race. Dominic Brown is led throughout, but there's some really interesting goings on behind him. Daniel Wilde dropping off the pace now. I don't think he's going to feature in the latter stages of this race. Racing for the top two, an automatic qualification for the next round. Still Dominic Brown from Matthew Williams. They'll hear the bell this time. James Habergham really digging in. You can see it on his face, but this looking more and more like a two-horse race for automatic qualification. Matthew Williams has judged it well, spent a lot of time at the back of that group of four or five, but now has he got a final kick that can take him past Dominic Brown? They've gone on the inside of the back marker. There could be a couple more casualties. James Wright might be in trouble too, but Dominic Brown leads it out. Matthew Williams in behind him, but Brown's going to take it. He's led from the start. Dominic Brown won. Matthew Williams two. And it's a third place finish for Leeds Beckett's James Habergham. Again, just under four minutes for the two leaders. 359.69 which bodes well for Habergham because he was just in behind them. But automatic qualification for Matthew Williams of Cardiff Met. Dominic Brown takes first place in a good time, similar time to heat number one. So automatic qualifications thus far as Adam Ward is the last man over the line. 
Adam Moore, Alfred Yabsley, David Malarkey, Alex Goodall, Matthew Williams and Dominic Brown have all qualified automatically after three of the five preliminary heats. Up next, heat four. Heat four of the men's 1500 metres preliminaries. Again, the top four, sorry, the top two automatically through and a little bit of jostling on the start line there. Let's give you the runners and riders for this one. We've got Ben Hampshire of Exeter, James Coxon, Cambridge, Nathan Brown, Coventry, Aaron Cooper, Worcester, Blake Moore, St. Mary's, Josh Mully, Oxford Brooks, Harry Wells, Cardiff, Ambrick Gill, London School of Economics, and Thomas Costello of Cardiff Met. We've got Blake Moore currently in second place in those St. Mary's colours. Thomas Costello in the maroon and gold of Cardiff Met, looking to join Matthew Williams, who qualified automatically, but they're being led out by Aaron Cooper of Worcester at the moment. Worcester not done a great deal in these championships so far. James Coxon in those famous Cambridge colours currently in third place as well. Coventry's Nathan Brown just struggling with the pace a bit at the moment. He's the back marker. Ben Hampshire in no man's land as well between the back marker and that lead group. So one kilometre to go. Still the Worcester man leading this one out. Blake Morris, St. Mary's, bang on his shoulder, placing himself really well. Giving himself some space on the outside so he doesn't get boxed in. Got James Coxon there, really hugging that inside line of the lane number one. Does mean that he's running slightly less distance, but if there are moves outside him, then he can get boxed in, and it does make it difficult to jostle for position. A lot less so in track athletics, but in track cycling, that is not a place you want to be at all. It doesn't really look ready to make a move, the Cambridge man. Plenty of time to go. Just wondering if this top three, as it stands, might have a little bit more pace and might be able to leave the stragglers behind. It's a bit more strung out than we've seen it in the previous heats here, but plenty of racing to go. They'll see three laps at the end of this one. So 600 metres remaining, and the lead has changed hands. Blake Moore from St. Mary's crosses the whitewash in first place for the first time in this race. And he's just slowly winding the pace up. It's really gradual, but that will start to take its toll on the chasing pack. And here is the response from James Coxon of Cambridge. He's given himself a little bit of space on the outside now and goes around Thomas Costello into third place. But Blake Moore looks very comfortable at the front. James Coxon now in second place and Aaron Cooper of Worcester drops down into third having led in the early stages. There'll be 400 metres to go for the back marker who's uh, Ben Hampshire from Exeter. Oh, I do apologise, there's a man behind him as well. Oxford Brooks is Josh Mully. As one more lap 
than the rest of the field. But this is the final lap. They'll hear the bell this time, and Blakemore leads from Cambridge's James Coxon. Aaron Cooper from Worcester crosses the line in third place, and Thomas Costello is in fourth. Harry Wells from Cardiff is in fifth place, but he's not going to feature. In fact, I don't think anybody's going to feature aside from Blake Moore of St. Mary's. He's taking this one away from the rest of the pack, stretches his legs and goes around Oxford Brooks' is Josh Mully. He's going to take first place and James Coxon is in a real battle for second here and he's not going to get it, or is he? That might go down to a photo finish between Coxon and Cooper. I think he might just about have got it on the line, but I'll give you confirmation as soon as I have it. But no doubt about the winner. 40201 for Blakemore from St. Mary's. What a battle that was for the second automatic qualification spot. Ben Hampshire crosses the line in seventh place. And now the race is on for the final spot. Two very different athletes crossing this line. It's fresh as a daisy stuff for Josh Mully. But Nathan Brown actually still has 200 metres to go. So there's the group, including the winner. Excellent race from Blake Moore. Tucked himself in for the first half, took it away in the second. And the Coventry man. Nathan Brown coming round the final bank. He's got 50 metres to go here. He'll get a warm round of applause from this home crowd. And Nathan Brown crosses the line here at the Bucks Indoor Championships. And that concludes heat number four. The fifth and final heat of the men's 1,500 metres. Again, we've got nine on the start line competing for two automatic qualification spots. And the top eight next best runners up will go through as well. So the full lineup: Bradley Wilshire of Newcastle, Jethro McGraw of Birmingham. Don't get many Jethros these days, do you? Ethan Dunn of Liverpool, John Moores, Borjan Venovsky of King's College. Probably get even fewer Borjans. Sam Metcalf of Brunel, John Howarth of Cardiff, Brody Denholm of Oxford, Toby Rowe of Bath, and Connor McLean of Glasgow. Quick start for this one as well, flying out of the blocks. Got a photo finish for a second place as well. Shows how important it is to not take a race off, otherwise you will not be qualifying. Connor McLean, Glasgow, leading this one out. Tucked in behind him, Jethro McGraw of Birmingham. And then John Howarth of Cardiff in third place. In fourth place, Sam Metcalf of Brunel. And Bath's Toby Rowe just in behind him. 
That's the top five, but it's looking like a top three. And everybody else after a minute of this heat number five of the men's 1500 meter qualifiers. We move on to the 1500 women after this. We've got fours, eights, and three Ks today. Day of distance qualifiers. It's all about the finals then tomorrow. Brody Denholm of Oxford leading the chasing group. Ethan Dunham, Bradley Wilshire making up that three. And then cut off the back, we've got Borjan Vinovsky of King's College. He's half a lap behind and losing pace as well with five laps to go. Of course, there's plenty of field action going on as well. Got pole vault and long jump today. Connor McLean leading with four laps to go, but well positioned here is Jethro McGraw. I like the look of him. He's comfortable with the pace, giving himself a meter. Can often tell where the comfortable middle distance runners are because they're happy to be a meter behind and can just step on it, use the element of surprise to go around the outside when the time's right. Cardiff's John Howarth currently in third place too. It's looking a little bit more difficult for the guys in fourth and fifth. They're not quite getting cut adrift, but Brunel and Bath with some work to do. Brunel with Sam Metcalf, Bath with Toby Rowe. Three laps to go. Connor McLean leading them out here. 500 metres of this one to go. And now that top three have given themselves another couple of meters on fourth and fifth don't think they're going to feature especially now as the pace gets wound up and I did say I like the look of Jethro McGraw he decides now is the time to go around McLean who's led from the start and really try and put the pressure on the rest of the group which he does the response hasn't come either Connor McLean looks like he's starting to run backwards as does John Howarth because Jethro McGraw is taking this away from the pair of them and that's stringing out the rest of the group as well. Jethro McGraw leads with a lap to go. Connor McLean in second place. John Howarth in third. Now the effort's coming in from Toby Rowe here. I think he fancies catching the Cardiff athlete. And Sam Metcalf in fifth place. This is strung out as we've had a race and this high pace from Jethro McGraw. Well, if he decides to ease off and everyone else does, this won't bode too well for the fastest loser times. It's not going to matter for the top two, and we know exactly who they are going to be. Jethro McGraw ran a great race, just over four minutes. Connor McLean picks up second, and John Howarth really puts the foot down to finish in third place as quickly as he can and try and pick up one of those fastest losers. But there's your victor. Jethro McGraw becomes the ninth man to automatically qualify. And Conor McLean guarantees his place in the next round as well. It'll be an anxious wait for all those that finish third and fourth. Toby Rowe is lying prone after a lung-busting effort on this Sheffield indoor track for him. And Borjan Vanovsky has got one lap to go. And Bradley Wilshire had to take an evasive manoeuvre there. So Toby Rowe just trying to desperately get rid of that lactic acid. 1,500 on the indoor track. Very difficult race indeed. Well, there's the group. When we have our final finisher, that will take us to the end of the 1,500 preliminaries. Your automatic qualifiers. We've got Adam Moore and Alfred Yabsley, Alex Goodall, David Malarkey, Matthew Williams, Dominic Brown, James Coxon, Blake Moore, Jethro McGraw, Connor McLean, and our final finisher will not be featuring in the later rounds, but Borjan Vinovsky of King's College gets himself over the line, and that concludes the qualifiers for the men's 1500 metres. Next up, it's the women's.
So once again, if you're just joining us, very warm welcome to the English Institute of Sport here in Sheffield. It's day two of the Bucks Indoor Athletics Championships 2019. We're talking middle distance today. We've had the men's qualifiers for the 1500 meters. It's the women's qualifiers next. We've got three heats. And because we've only got three heats, it's direct qualification for the final. The top two will go through from each heat as well as the three fastest qualifiers who didn't finish in the top two. So lots to race for, plenty going on in the field as well. We've got long jump, pole vault and high jump today. To keep abreast of all the results, don't forget to follow Bucks on all of the regular social media platforms, not just for the athletics, but for everything else that's going on. An incredibly busy weekend of sport, eight sports across six venues in the fabulous sporting city of Sheffield. But we'll be back next with the 1500 meter women's heats, three heats, and they'll begin in about 10 minutes time.
Welcome back to the Bucks Nationals. It's day two. We're celebrating 100 years of university sport this season. And what better way than at the EIS for day two of these indoor championships. This is the women's 1500 meters competition. We've got three heats. The top two from each heat make their way directly to the final. Then we also have spots for the three best runners up that don't get into those top two positions. Receiving news that Katie Lowry will not start heat number one, but the other eight will be called to the line very shortly. Katie Bretherton from Bristol, Lauren Nichols of St. Mary's, Alex Mundell of Imperial, Natalie Beadle, Oxford, Emily Thompson, Birmingham, Sophie Elsden, Liverpool Hope, and Hannah Willis from Leicester. And we get underway. Seven and a half laps of this 200 meter track, the lead out. by Natalie Bretherton from Bristol. Well, a sneaky move on the inside there. Alex Mandel from Imperial. That Imperial jersey, navy, with the band across the chest with Imperial written upon it. You can't see it with these shorter tops on the female athletes because they've got the numbers over the front. But many recognisable jerseys, notably Lauren Nichols of St Mary's. She's in that Argentina football shirt style, blue and white stripes. She's in third place at the moment. And Emily Thompson in the red of Birmingham. They're around about fourth place at the moment. But an interesting bunch race here. We didn't have any of these in the men's qualifiers. We had usually a back marker or two. The back marker in this one, Hannah Willis from Leicester in the green jersey with the maroon panels. Just starting to string out now as the pace winds up. The long jump competition has started in the middle of the track. If we get any results, we will bring those to you. But all of our concentration is on the track events today. The qualifiers for tomorrow's final in the 1500, the 400, the relays, and the 3000s as well. Now, Natalie Bretherton from Bristol starting to make a move on Alex Mundell. The Imperial run-ups led out for the last couple of laps. Emily Thompson of Birmingham. She's staying quite close to the outside of lane one as well, giving herself plenty of space should she need to make a move around the outside. And tucked in as well, Lauren Nichols from St. Mary's. All of them looking pretty comfortable with the pace at the moment, but only the top two qualifying automatically. The rest battling it out for the qualification spots. It is the three best times though, so it could well be the third, fourth and fifth place athletes from this or the next qualification race. So Alex Mundell still leading this one out. That top six has now become a top four really. Lauren Nichols dropping back and the rest of the athletes not making any pace behind her. They'll see three laps to go at the end of this one. Alex Mundell still leading this one out, but Natalie Bretherton looks poised to strike, as does Emily Thompson from Birmingham. And now Emily Thompson does move into third place. Her Birmingham teammate alongside her. It could be a Birmingham 1 2. Lauren Nichols has dropped right back now. She's around about 20, 25 metres behind this lead group of four. Got 400 metres to go. 
And Emily Thompson in particular looking very comfortable. It's being led out by Bretherton and Imperials Alex Mundell. Mundell's been there right at the start. I wonder which of these is going to fatigue. Oh, and here comes the move. It's a Birmingham 1-2 as well. We did say to keep an eye on Emily Thompson, and she is going to lead this one out on the bell lap. But who will be joining her? And can she hold this pace for 200 metres? Natalie Bretherton currently in third place. But as it stands, it's a Birmingham 1-2. Maisie Grace holding on to second place at the moment, but it's Emily Thompson who's going to take this one into the home straight. This has been a beautifully timed run, but look at the battle for second place. It's going to be a win for Emily Thompson. Maisie Grace for Birmingham isn't going to hold on. Natalie Bretherton is going to take second place, but Maisie Grace is going to put a good time in, and she is going to put herself in contention for one of those best runners-up spots. But Emily Thompson takes the victory. Second place goes to Natalie Bretherton of Bristol, Maisie Grace of Birmingham. Picks up third. And the final athlete over the line is Hannah Willis of Leicester. And that completes heat number one of the women's 1500 metres. Heat number two in the women's 1500 meter preliminaries. Natalie Bretherton and Emily Thompson booking their place after heat number one. Who will be joining them? Same story in all three heats. The top two automatic qualifiers, regardless of time. So Rebecca Brown goes for University of Central Lancashire. Clara Petit of Newcastle, Amy Jackson, Liverpool, John Moores, Rosemary Johnson of Loughborough, Sophie Kent, Wolverhampton, Isabel Rodriguez, East Anglia, Anna Sharp of Oxford, Zoe Bates of Aberdeen, and Maisie Boast of St. Mary's. As number nine on her shorts, and she's currently the back marker in the blue and white stripes. Sharp start here from Isabel Rodriguez, East Anglia, and Zoe Bates of Aberdeen goes to join her at the front. Tucked in in third place is Rosemary Johnson of Loughborough. We had a big bunch group in heat number one. This one is already stringing out. We've got a six and a three, but already a few people at the back of that six. Looking like this is going to be a pretty frantic pace for them to keep up with for the remaining six laps or so of this second heat of the women's 15. Izzy Rodriguez leads again. Anna Sharp of Oxford is poised well. She's being forced into the second lane. I mean, she's got a few extra metres to run come the end of 1500. And then tucking up the inside there is Rosemary Johnson of Loughborough. 
taking the short route on the inside. That makes overtaking difficult, but she won't mind at the moment. Anyone who's comfortable with the pace. Be happy to tuck in the bodies, keep it ticking over, and then make the move when it counts. But there is actually a little bit of room on the inside of Isabel Rodriguez, who's just started to look slightly heavier footed in the last lap or so. Compare her action to Rosemary Johnson from Loughborough. Looks very compact. Now that six has definitely become a four. Two have been cut off the back. A mazy boast of St. Mary's is the back marker currently in ninth spot. As the pace starts to go up. In fact, you could say that it might become a two, a two, and a two. Sophie Kent from Wolverhampton is in that second group. Oh, it's absolutely a four and a two now. We've got Rosemary Johnson of Loughborough. Moving towards the front, she's going to dictate the pace for the final three and a half laps of this race. And Isabel Rodriguez is going to have to work hard to keep up with her. She's been at the front for the majority of the race. I think she's going to come under some scrutiny from Aberdeen. Zoe Bates, who's currently in third place. Anna Sharp from Oxford just starting to lose pace with this group of three. But there's your race leader, Rosemary Johnson of Loughborough, looking to join Natalie Bretherton and Emily Thompson in the final. Because of the fact that we've only got three heats, it is straight to the final, no semi-finals. So one fewer race for these women's 1500 meters athletes to run. Means they can put it all in here and then rest ahead of tomorrow. But Rosemary Johnson leads with 400 meters to go. Izzy Rodriguez in second place. Zoe Bates in third. And Anna Sharp's been cut off from that main group now. Sophie Kent in fifth. Amy Jackson in sixth. But they're well out of shot. Let's stay with the top three because at the moment it's three athletes for two places. As Rosemary Johnson goes around Maisie Vos, who is a late addition to this heat too. I think Rebecca Brown of University of Central Lancashire and Clara Petit of Newcastle might be in a bit of trouble as well. As the leaders hear the bell, Rosemary Johnson takes it. And here's you, Rodriguez. It's been those two at the front for the entire race. Rodriguez led for most of it, but then Rosemary Johnson, having been tucked in, starts to sweep up the back markers. And is there a response from third place? Or are these two going to take it? There's a bit of a move here for the lead. It doesn't matter if you finish first or second. There's only pride at stake because qualification will go to each of these. But who will take the victory? Rosemary Johnson from Loughborough comes down the home straight. She laps up Rebecca Brown and takes the win. Isabel Rodriguez responded well to the change of pace and she picks up second place in the colours of East Anglia. And 4.36.32 is the winning time for Rosemary Johnson. Isabel Rodriguez picks up second place. It's a tougher slog for the guys at the back. Zoe Bates there. Good race from her. Decent time might be in contention. Anna Sharp from Oxford put everything in. Just couldn't quite keep up with the top runners in this second heat. Rebecca Brown stops the clock. University of Central Lancashire. And now comes Clara Petit from Newcastle. And Maisie Boast of St. Mary's, the final finisher, will conclude heat number two, one heat to go.
the athletes take the line for the third and final heat of the women's 1500 meters. Seven and a half laps and the top two will get a place in the Bucks final tomorrow here at the English Institute of Sport. Celebrating 100 years of university sport and boy oh boy have they put on a great show for us so far. Both yesterday and today lining up on the inside in that royal blue jersey of East London is Hannah Nakeen. Katie Lord of Nottingham goes alongside her. Aista Rasmiti of Leicester, Kirsty Walker, Loughborough, Danny Chattington, Imperial, Isabel Dye, Cambridge, Megan Driscoll, Newcastle, Lara Foster, Middlesex, and Ellen Newton in the hot pink of Nottingham Trent. On the outside as the gun goes, and we are underway. Well, Kirsty Walker shoots straight to the front. She wants to take the lead into the first lap. Dictate a high pace. Isabel Dye of Cambridge just pulling up alongside her. We've got Jenny Chattington, those imperial colours in third place. And Ella Newton of Nottingham Trent. Currently in fourth, it's Nottingham Trent versus Nottingham. Shoulder to shoulder at the moment. Katie Lord in the green of Nottingham. And there's Hannah Nakeen in the blue of East London. They're the top six. There's a group of three behind them and that's been the pattern for a few of these distance races we've had the front runners and the back markers and there's Isabel Dyke pushing Loughborough's Kirsty Walker early on in this one at the back there we've got Eisty Rosmita of Leicester Lara Foster of Middlesex is in there as well as is Megan Driscoll of Newcastle. And they're noticeably losing pace with the leaders. Speaking of losing pace with the leaders, we've lost Hannah Nakeen of East London. So that six has become a five early on, being led out by Kirsty Walker. The battle seems to be between Walker and Dye. But Chatterton tucked herself in there quite nicely. We saw in the previous heat, this is exactly what Rosemary Johnson did. Took that inside line, saved her legs. And then as soon as it became time to inject some pace, she took it away from everybody else. So keep your eye on Chattington. That red strip around the chest and back as she moves up into second place. Behind Isabel Dye, but it won't mean a great deal this moment in time because the pace hasn't been injected. Well, expected to creep up now. Four laps to go, 800 metres, and the lead six became a lead five, now becomes a lead four as Katie Lord of Nottingham drops off the back. And Hannah Nakeen has lost about 60 metres now. And Lara Foster and Eister Rosmita are in danger of catching her as they trot around. Megan Driscoll is the back marker in the Newcastle colours. She's about half a lap behind our leaders, Kirsty Walker, still at the front of the pack, but just behind her, we've got Cambridge and Imperial ready to pounce, and Chattington from Imperial is the first to go, and Kirsty Walker just starts to lose pace, and so now it's Imperial and Cambridge from Trent and Loughborough. Danny Chattington did say she was poised there, in third wheel, as it were, on the inside. She's the first to inject some pace, but Isabel Dyes responded. And now Kirsty Walker has to work hard to stay on the shoulder, as does Ellen Newton from Nottingham Trent. Remember, the top two qualifying for the final, and then the three next best times as Ellen Newton thought for a second about putting a move on with 400 metres to go. Jan Danny Chattington. He's got a metre on the rest of the field. Seems as though Kirsty Walker wanted to go around Cambridge's Isabel Dye there, but as soon as they got to the bank, she had to go the long way round, and Isabel Dye was able to respond. But Walker moves back into second. I think the final lap of this one is going to be fascinating, especially if Danny Chattinson can keep up this pace, as she'll have a healthy lead as she's going to go around Megan Driscoll. 
And now they will hear the bell. The race is on for automatic qualification. Danny Chattinson is in pole position. Ellen Newton in behind her. Kirsty Walker led for so much of the race and now really has to make a move if she's going to get automatic qualification. But now she does start to make the meters up. And can she creep past Nottingham Trent's Ellen Newton? There's your race leader. And this is going to be a fantastic race for the finish. Kirsty Walker has found some gas from somewhere and now she's in danger of going past Danny Chattinson. And she's going to as well. Kirsty Walker takes it home, stops the clock in 435.94. Danny Chattinson picks up second place. Ellen Newton went a little bit too early. So she's going to have to wait and see if her time is going to be enough in its fourth place for Isabel Dye. But there's your race winner from Loughborough, Kirsty Walker. Danny Chattington from Imperial joins her in the final. Nice to you, Mitre of Leicester is the next over the line. And here's East London's Hannah Nakeen. Comfortable finish for her under the five minute mark. And our final athlete over the line in the 1500 meter qualifiers. Lara Foster from Middlesex. Well, another excellent race at the front of the pack, but everybody safely across the line in the women's 1500 meter qualifiers. Automatically booking their place. We have Natalie Bretherton of Bristol, Emily Thompson of Birmingham, Isabel Rodriguez of East Anglia, Loughborough's Rosemary Johnson. She's joined by her teammate Kirsty Walker and Danny Chattinson of Imperial. And three more will join them once the runners up times are calculated. The final will be tomorrow. Our next event is in around about 10 minutes time and it's the men's 400 meter qualifiers. We've got 15 heats here and it's going to be frantic and fast stuff. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back with the 400 qualifiers at the Bucks Indoor Athletics Championships in 10 minutes' time.
This is the Bucks Indoor Nationals 2019 here at the English Institute of Sport in Sheffield. And the next event on the track is the men's 400 meter qualifiers. 15 preliminaries, sorry, 13 preliminaries in total. The winner of each heat and the 17 next best times guaranteed qualification for the semi-finals. The semi-finals will be tomorrow, as will the finals. So let's introduce you to the athletes in the first heat. Thomas Pitkin of Brunel does not start in lane one, so Scott Gunning of Coventry goes in two. Adam Walker of Northumbria in three. Oxford Brooks is Dan Satch in four. Martin Dawson of Southampton in five. And on the outside, at the top of your screens from St. Mary's, is Charlie Baldwin. Heat one of 13 winner, guaranteeing themselves a place in the semi-final. Okay. 
And we do get away first time, and it's a good start from Dan Satch of Oxford Brooks, but going well from St. Mary's in the outside lane is Charlie Baldwin. Coventry Scott Gunning making up ground in lane two as well. Two laps of this indoor 200 meter track. As they hear the bell this time, and it's a race for the inside lane, being led out by Scott Gunning from Coventry, looking for the automatic qualification place. Second place, Adam Walker of Northumbria, and Dan Satch from Oxford Brooks working hard, but not making any inroads down the back straight as Scott Gunning looking to take this one away. But here comes the move from second place. It's going to be a kick down the back straight. Is it going to be enough to get past Gunning? It's going to be tight on the line. I don't think it's quite going to be a first to finish though Adam Walker takes it with about a meter to go but it'll be a good time for gunning Walker automatic qualifier 52.90 is the time and that takes us to the end of heat number one Well, five finishes, hard graft, 400 metres. Trying to make your metres up in the first lap and then duck into that inside lane for the second. Championship record, incidentally, 46.91. Held equally by David Hall from Brunel, who set it in 2015. Then in February 2017, Cameron Chalmers from Bath equaled it. Adam Walker qualifying in that opener in 52.90. Next up, heat number two. Here come the athletes for heat two of the men's 400 metres qualification. Lining up there in lane one is Rafe Scott of Manchester Met. Cardiff Met, Rodri Williams is in lane two. James Finney from Leicester goes in three. Alistair Chalmers of Bath goes in lane four. He's in that blue jersey just practising his start. At the moment, there's no sign of Oliver Biddle of Gloucestershire, he's due to start in lane five. No confirmation that he won't be with us for heat number two, but as soon as I do hear anything, I will let you know. And then Moiris Egan of St. Mary's goes in the outside lane in that blue and white striped vest. They'll be getting underway with heat two of the men's 400 meters in a few moments time. Heat two of the men's 400 metres qualification. Adam Walker from Northumbria stopped the clock in 52.90 in heat number one. 
So Rafe Scott, Man Met in one. Rodri Williams, Cardiff Met two. James Finney, Leicester three. Alistair Chambers, Bath four. Nobody in lane five, so Morris Egan of St. Mary's is on his own in lane six. Morris Egan's got nobody to run against here. He's out there on his own as it is, but can't even glance inside and see lane five, but he will be seeing James Finney very shortly. Sorry, Alistair Chalmers, should I say, in the Bath jersey, because he's had a fantastic start. They go past the markers and into lane one, and as they hear the bell, it's going to be Bath from Cardiff Met, from St. Mary's. And Alistair Chalmers of Bath, Looking strong down that back straight. Rodri Williams starting to lose pace. Remember, only the winner of this heat guarantees a place in the semi-final. Everyone else goes down to time. There are 17 times from 13 heats available. But Chalmers checks over the shoulder. 50.31 for him. That's the fastest qualification so far. There'll be a photo for second place. Rodri Williams. James Finney posting very similar times, but no doubt about the victor in heat number two. 50.31 for Bath's Alistair Chalmers. Heat three of the men's 400 metres preliminary. Alistair Chalmers and Adam Walker already guaranteed themselves qualification for the next round. Here we have Jack Houghton of Swansea on the inside lane. Jack Hocking of Birmingham in two. Leeds Beckett's Tom Wood in three. Kareem Salman Jackson of King's College in four. Harvey Stainthorpe of Leeds in five. Lane six is empty. Good start there from Jack Hocklin of Birmingham. Jack Houghton from Swansea already looking like he's got some meters to make up. But Jack Hocking is eating up the back straight. He's already gone past Tom Wood inside him. 
and he will lead as we go into the home straight for the first time past the markers and into lane number one as they hear the bell Harvey Stainthorpe from Leeds working hard to put himself in second place Kareem Selman Jackson of King's College in fourth with a lot of work to do Jack Hocking absolutely flying looks like he started to ease off Shouldn't be too early, but Harvey Stainthorpe is finishing well, looking to post a time that'll get him into the semi-finals. But automatic qualification goes to Jack Hocking, 48.96, the first under 50 seconds. Fastest qualification time of the day so far. And qualifying from Heat 3 is Birmingham's Jack Hocking. Heat number four of the men's 400 meter preliminaries. Charlie Skates of Manchester goes in lane one. Ewan Urquhart, Glasgow in two. Frederick Lieger of Solent in three. Mark Cotton, Birmingham in four. Ross Edmonds, Edinburgh in five. And Tom Clark, Liverpool, John Moores in lane six. Good start in lane five from Ross Edmonds, but Mark Cottam of Birmingham is eating up the track on the back straight. Going well in the Glasgow colours is Ewan Urquhart, but as they come into the back straight, sorry, the home straight now, we'll get a good idea of the placings here. And Mark Cottam is absolutely flying. We saw Jack Hocking go around in 48.97 to qualify automatically in the previous heat. 
His Birmingham teammate looks as though he's going to do exactly the same as he goes down the back straight for the final time in this qualifier. Ewan Urquhart currently in second place, but nobody is going to catch the Birmingham man. Mark Cottam, keep your eye on the clock. The fastest time so far, 48.97, but Cottam goes down the gears and cruises over the line in under 50 seconds. Ross Edmonds of Edinburgh ended up taking second place. Urquhart picking up third. Remember, there are fastest qualifier places behind the winner but no doubt who the winner was mark cottam 49.84 goes through to the semi-finals Heat five of the men's 400 meters. And again, we've got a full house for this one. Portsmouth, Kehinde, Adenuga goes in one. Lennox Thompson of East London in two. Will Stapleton, Sheffield Hallam in three. James Warhurst of Bristol in four. London School of Economics represented by Alexander Kitson in five. And in the Palatinate of Durham, Daniel Rees goes in six. Away we go in heat number five. The winner automatically qualifies. It's been a good start for Will Stapleton of Sheffield Hallam in the middle and on the outside, Daniel Reese of Durham going well too. But Lennox Thompson of East London starting to power through now. And he's going to be in pole position going into the home straight. Goes past the markers and into the inside lane where Daniel Reese cuts in to hear the bell. And Will Stapleton of Sheffield Hallam just about pips him into second place. But Lennox Thompson just started to tie up a bit now down the back straight this is where the race really could be on Daniel Reese looks like he's putting a lot of effort in to keep up with Will Stapleton one bend to go this could be the closest race we've had so far Will Stapleton gets the home crowd behind him Lennox Thompson might just about have enough power to hold on oh they're all hitting the wall together it's going to be a photo finish and Daniel Reese might just have taken that well, 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 Thompson and Stapleton hit the travelator at the same time. Daniel Reese had another 10 metres in the legs. That's going to go to a photo finish to see who's winning. I'm sure all three times will be enough to qualify. But what a brilliant race, and that's just a preliminary as well. That's what happens 
when you tell them that the first person is the only qualifier. Lennox Thompson looked home and hose, but it's almost like his leg stopped working. Well, Daniel Reese has been awarded the victory. He looked out of the race with 100 metres to go. Fantastic stuff. My favourite race of the day so far, actually. That was heat five. Next up, heat six. Five heats gone of the men's 400 metres preliminary. Next up is heat number six. We had a brilliant heat five. Let's see if this one can match up. Lane one's empty. So Mark McLaughlin of Sterling goes in two. Ben Watts, Sussex in three. Chris Sean Aiken of Glasgow in four. Scott Thompson, Exeter in five. And Matt Newton of Oxford on the outside in lane six for heat six of the men's 400 metres. Forty-eight point nine four, the fastest qualification time so far. Crucian Aiken eating up the back straight. He's already left Scott Thompson for dead outside him for Exeter. He's gone past Matt Newton as well, and he'll lead going into the home straight. There's only really one athlete in this, but we've seen a few overcook it over the opening 200 metres. Matt Newton of Oxford in second place, but Chris Sean Atkin of Glasgow goes down the back straight for the final time in the lead, but now starts to hit the travelator. Is anybody going to have enough in the tank to take him? Scott Thompson currently in third place, but Chris Sean Aiken should have enough to hold on here and will slows it right down. Let's take a look at this time. Under 49 seconds for him, 48.93. That is unofficially the fastest qualification time by 0 0.01. He goes ahead of Mark Cottam and he will be racing in the semi-finals.
on to heat seven. Just past the halfway point of these men's 400 metre preliminaries. A couple of empty lanes in this one. So one out of four. Actually, Connor Owen is going to take his place on the start line. So it's just lane one that's empty here. Hannibal Knowles of Bristol. And that dark red jersey goes in one. Ben Claridge in the blue and gold of Bath in two. Kieran Elland, Cardiff Met in three. James McClafferty, Strathclyde in four. Connor Owen, the black and gold of York on the outside. Two laps, winner goes straight through. Best runners up have the chance of qualifying too. James McClafferty starting very well for Strathclyde. Keep your eye on Ben Claridge in the blue of Bath as well as he cruises through. They both leave Connor Owen from York in their wake and Ben Claridge will lead going into the home straight. Looks a pretty relaxed run so far. Looks very comfortable with the pace as he hears the bell. Ben Claridge in first place. Kieran Allen from Cardiff Met currently in third. Got Hannibal Knowles of Bristol in fourth, and York's Connor Owen is the back marker. It's going down the back straight for the final time. Ben Claridge just cruising round. We've seen some of the sprinters really the eyeballs out to try and put a time in here, but Ben Claridge looks the most relaxed of the lot. Stops the clock 50.39. It's close for second place. Good times. for both the Bristol athlete and the Cardiff Met. James McClafferty of Strathclyde getting over in a good time too, but Ben Claridge wins it 50.39 and he made that one look pretty easy in heat seven. They take their marks for heat eight of the men's 400 preliminaries. 
And it's great tracks for Loughborough in lane two. Hugh Baker, Oxford three. David Silk, Exeter four. Giuseppe Bonifazio, Nottingham five. Adam McCarthy leads Beckett on the outside in six. Nobody on the inside in lane one, so Ellis Greatorex of Loughborough has everybody in his sights. Good start on the outside from Giuseppe Bonifazio of Nottingham. He goes around, leads back, it's Adam McCarthy. And Ellis Greatorex looks like he's going very well on the inside as well, in lane two. They'll reach those markers around about the same time, but it's advantage to the Loughborough man as they hear the bell. So Bonifacio tries to tuck himself in, but Ellis Greatorex improves the gap. That compact running style down the back straight. Winner of this race automatically qualifies, but the times count for runners up too. There are 17 runners up spots available from 13 heats. But Ellis Greatorex taking this one home in a very respectable 49.71 under that 50 second barrier. Everyone's safely over the line. He looks pretty happy with that. Eight heats down, Ellis Great Track guarantees his place in the semi finals. Heat number nine of 13 in the men's 400. Regia Gardner of Loughborough goes in lane one. Christopher Stewart, St. Andrews in two. Chris Goodall, Edinburgh three. Alex Nicholson, Royal Holloway in four. Kai Fletcher, Brighton in five. Marcus Archer of Robert Gordon in lane six. Decent starts for everyone, but Gardner of Loughborough eats up St. Andrews's Christopher Stewart already, then gets past Christopher Goodall and makes his way into the rest of the pack as well. This is a lightning start from Regia Gardner. 
And at the break point, Marcus Archer really working hard to keep on Gardner's heels, but there's only one man in this race at the moment. He can ease up going down the back straight, knowing that this one is pretty much won for Gardner. He was the favourite going into this. Checks over the left shoulder, but knows he can take it down the gears, cruise over the line, which he does, still stops the clock in under 49 and a half seconds. Marcus Archer of Robert Gordon picks up second place. That should be enough to qualify him for the semi-finals tomorrow. But Gardner picks up the victory, 49.47 seconds to end heat number nine. Ready to go with heat number 10. Nobody in lane one. Ben Sylvester of Warwick goes in lane two. Benedict, Benedict Brooks from Falmouth in three. East London's Joseph Hubbock in four. Liam McGiven of Sheffield in lane five. And Mark Hearn of Manchester goes in lane six. Nine point four seven. the lead time so far. Gardner set that in the previous heat. Joseph Hubbard going very well here, as is Liam McGiven of Sheffield. Looking like those two are going to lead going into this back straight. Who's going to get the advantage into lane one? They'll come around this corner. They'll reach the break point. And it is going to be McGiven from Sheffield who hears the bell first. Joseph Hubbard just behind him, but McGiven... Got the chance to take this one away down the back straight. The group of three behind them aren't going to feature, and I don't think their times will feature come qualification for the semi-finals. The winner guarantees their place through, but the second place should be enough because there are 17 spots and 13 heats. But no chances been taken here by Liam McGiven. He picks up the victory, dips under the 50-second marker as well. 
48.89 for him. He finishes ahead of Joseph Hubbock from East London. We'll see him in the semi-finals as well. But there is your Heat 10 winner, Liam McGiven of Sheffield. Heat 11 of 13 in the men's 400 metres. We're 10 down, 10 guaranteed qualifiers. And a few nervous waits for runners up. But let's give you the runners and riders in Heat 11. We've got two to come after this as well. Kieran Twaddle in the yellow of Harriet Watt will go on the inside lane. Nottingham's Makun Madar will be in the green jersey with the white and gold trim in lane two. Max Shop of Brunel. That navy jersey with the yellow trim is in three. Michael Nichols of Winchester goes in four. Chichester's Matthew Overall in five. And in the Palatinate of Durham, in lane six, is Daniel Webb. A few adjustments for him to be made. He hasn't pinned his number six to his shorts. So that's the slight delay for this one. This is day two of... The Bucks Indoor Nationals. It's a real hustle and bustle down there in the track centre at the moment because as well as these 400 qualifiers, we've got some field events going on too. We've got high jump at both ends, long jump as well. And the pole vault will be getting underway at some point too. We won't be bringing you a lot of coverage of those field events. However, if I get any results, I will let you know who's taken them. We should be having some medal ceremonies for the field events too. On the track today, it's just qualifiers ahead of a bumper day of finals tomorrow. So we've already had the 1500 meter men's and women's this morning. We've got the 800 to come as well as the three Ks and the 1500 meter semis too. The 1500s were what we kicked off with today. There's a mascot race happening at some point. Goodness knows how that'll go. And then we've got 
four by 200 meter relay heats to close the day. But right now, we're preparing for heat 11 of the men's 400 preliminaries, all six lanes. Let's give you a quick rundown again. On the inside lane, 451 on his back on the left hand side of your screens there. That's Kieran Twaddle from Heriot Watt in the green of Nottingham to his right, Makun Madar of Nottingham. Max Shop of Brunel in the Navy goes in three. Winchester's Michael Nichols in the blue jersey with a white and red swoosh. And then Matthew Overall of Chichester. Those five ready and waiting to go. But Daniel Webb, due to that slight delay, just practices his start around that bank in the outside lane. He'll take his place in lane six and will be ready to go with heat 11. Daniel Webb already being caught by Matthew Overall in lane five from Chichester. Roaring through the middle, though, is Max Shop of Brunel and Makun Madar of Nottingham going well too. Kieran Twaddle of Harriet Watt in danger of being left behind. From Makun Madar of Nottingham and Brunel's Max Shop are coming under pressure here from Matthew Overall from Chichester, who's had a great second 100 metres and he'll lead going into the back straight for the final time. Max Shop trying to dart up the inside, but he's being held off at the moment by Overall as we go into the final corner of heat 11 of the men's 400 metre qualifiers. Makun Madar's hit the travelator, so he's not going to feature. But Matthew Overall is going to hold on. Max Shop's going to take second place. Both times should be enough to qualify. But Matthew Overall certainly will. He takes the win. He also hits the deck to take some oxygen in. And he's gone under 50 seconds too. There are a lot of qualifiers under that 49 and a half second mark. But around about 49.1 for Overall which is the fastest time we've had so far. That clock just over the right shoulder of the official there. Stops in 49.15. So the bar has been raised by Chichester's Matthew Overall. He takes the win in heat 11. Thank you. 
Heat 12 of 13 in the men's 400 metres. All six lanes in operation here. Alexandra Chazelle of Sheffield goes in one. Niall Thomas of Chester in two. Samuel Barella, Brighton in three. Matthew Pagan, Manchester Met in four. David Migliotari's Trinity St. David in five. Lewis Thorne of Sheffield Hallam in six. And the first false start of these qualifiers. And we had to wait all the way until heat 12 to get it. We had plenty in the 60 metres yesterday. Such a fast and frantic series of events. It's been a little bit more settled in this longer format sprint. Two Sheffield athletes bookending this one. Alexandra Trezell of Sheffield in one. Sheffield Hallam represented by Lewis Thorne in six so what color will the card be and who will it be awarded to confirmation from the starter no action will be taken the green card is shown by the official in the top right of your screen so no technical offense committed and we will get back to the start of heat 12. Chazelle in one, Thomas in two, Barella three, Pagan four, Migliatari five, and Lewis Thorne in six. Set. And we do get away this time. Migliatari of Trinity St. David is being caught early on by Matthew Pagan of Manchester Met. Chazelle of Sheffield going well on the inside too. We'll get a good idea of exactly how well as they come round this bend. Matthew Pagan takes the lead. And Lewis Horn of Sheffield Hallam is in second place. Chazelle of Sheffield in third. And Migliatari, Trinity St. David is in fourth, but he's in danger of getting cut off. Matthew Pagan still leads, but he's coming under scrutiny from Lewis Thorne now, who's going to need to go the long way around the outside in that Sheffield Hallam jersey to take first place in automatic qualification. Matthew Pagan is keeping the speed down. He doesn't want to take any risks, and he books himself a place in the semi-final. Thorne in second place, Chazelle in third, and not too far behind Migliatari of Trinity St. David. David is in fourth place. But there's your victor in the orange and blue of Manchester Met. Matthew Pagan takes the win in Heat 12.
All athletes in position ahead of heat 13, the final heat of the men's 400 metres before we move on to the women's competition. Benjamin Schofield, Northumbria in the black jersey with the red trim on the inside lane in the bottom left of your screen. Fergus Rule of Sterling goes in lane two. Abdul Azam of Hull in the bumblebee colours goes in three. Canterbury Christchurch represented by Charlie Shingleton in four. Tom Kenwright Southampton in five and Lewis Brown Strathclyde in lane six. Winner automatically qualifies. Matthew overall of Chichester has set the benchmark time of 49.15. Will any of these six come close to that? Fergus Rule's gone off well in lane two. And Abdul Azam is getting left behind here. Also, Ben Schofield from Northumbria looking like he's going well, but Lewis Brown from Strathclyde will take some catch in. He's run a fantastic opening lap, and he's got 10 metres between him and the rest of the field. Tom Kenwright from Southampton leading the chasing pack but that is exactly what they are that's the gap between lewis brown and the rest of the field well he could pretty much speed walk from here on in and take this checks over the left shoulder and despite a late charge from charlie shingleton lewis brown takes the win 49.6 at a canter and that is the final heat completed, and Lewis Brown takes it in 49.6. This is setting up to be a wonderful competition. So many in that 49 and a half second bracket, even taking the speed off at the end. And they'll have the semi-finals, quarter to four this afternoon, so make sure you join us for that. And that concludes the opening session this morning. We've had 1,500 metre qualifications and 400 metre qualifications. We will be back in around about 15 minutes time. In fact, just under 15 minutes time. The 800 metre men's semi-finals are next. And we look forward to you joining us then.
So, 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 so,